Here we'll build a bar chart for this data set, which is the positions for the players in the NBA sample. Again, we have 30 observations falling into one of five categories, point guards, shooting guards, small forwards, power forwards, and centers. First, we need to find the frequency of each category, which means building the frequency table. But since we've already done that in a previous example, I won't go through in detail and count those. Rather, we'll just put the results here in this frequency table. We have the five positions and the frequencies. There are four point guards, nine shooting guards, seven small forwards, and five power forwards and five centers. Now, just like with the histogram, we start with our grid. And this time, the horizontal axis will represent, again, our categories. So we'll have five spots for our bars to go. And then the vertical axis will, again, represent frequency. So the horizontal axis is position. The vertical axis is frequency. The highest frequency we see is 9, so we need to make sure we go up to at least 9. Let's again go to 10. And now we're ready to draw a bar for each position. So rather than having the bars connect like they would with a histogram, with a bar chart, since we're thinking of these as separate categories, they're not ones that flow into one another, we'll draw the bars with some separation. So at the point guard position, we'll draw a bar that goes up to 4, since there are 4 of those. And then at the shooting guard position, we'll draw one that goes up to nine. Small forwards have a frequency of seven. And power forwards and centers each have a frequency of five. So again, we're drawing a bar where the height represents the frequency of that category. But unlike with a histogram, these bars are separated because we're indicating that these are separate categories and there's not a flow from one to the next.